as we continue to talk about encouraging environmental action, we want to take a look at government policies that could be making it hard for climate change companies to thrive and critical impact on the Nigerian economy on the breakfast this morning. Also, as a follow-up to that, we'll be looking at the change uh, to this climate, uh, how it is going to have a, an impact on our economy and the people, and what action needs to be taken to make sure that the adverse effect of this climate change doesn't get to us and cripple us. We'll also be taking a look at headlines on some national dailies with an analyst who will join us on Of The Press. Good morning and welcome to The Breakfast. I am Maureen. And I am Nyamgul. It's so glad to have you join us this Thursday morning. It is good to have you join us. How are you doing? <laughs> How is the fuel situation? Uh, it seems to be settling down a bit. Uh, is well, it, or is it not? Well, there is fuel as it is right now. The money to buy the fuel is what is the challenge. Mm -hmm. um, I was coming this morning and it was just funny to me. I saw boldly written on the dashboard on uh, where they write their prices, 500 naira a liter of mm -hmm. fuel. And I was just wondering to myself, just a few weeks ago, this would have been laughable. Yeah. But now... Un from, unthinkable, matter yes, of fact, a few yes. weeks ago. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but um, maybe also that is affecting the... the that should have affected the traffic uh, everywhere in Lagos, but Lagos, like we say, nobody send you. <laughs> Whether there's fuel or no fuel, people must go into the roads and uh, they must go to work. And that's the reality on ground. And so, yeah. Yeah, an interesting twist is coming up with regards to the removal of fuel subsidy. We have our neighboring uh, brothers and sisters now yeah. joining to protest. Yes. What people, a love. Uh, Cameroon yeah. is protesting. Uh -huh. Benin Republic is, is protesting. And uh, so many other countries may not even protest uh, openly, but they are feeling the bite right now. Uh, and I'm asking myself, if there was no fuel subsidy and people were just pocketing the money, the one that uh, was getting to these countries, how was it coming? Was it that they were pocketing the money and buying this fuel and taking, them directly to, taking it directly to these countries that are now protesting because it has affected them as well? Clearly, we were subsidizing them. Mm. Clearly, Nigeria was subsidized. You heard that statement by uh, President Tunu. We can continue subsidizing Cameroon, Niger, and Cameroon. And Nigeria was subsidizing these countries. Suddenly, the consumption has dropped from mm. the humongous quantity we were hearing. Mm. You know, for years, we didn't know for certain the quantity of fuel Nigeria was consuming mm -hmm. because of all the fraud going on in that sector. Yeah. So now the figures are dropping drastically because subsidy is gone. So but that means that it has placed us at par with countries like Cameroon, like uh, Niger, all other countries that they say we were subsidizing. Because if they are feeling the, the bite, we too are feeling the bite. Because there was fraud in a particular sector, you remove the kind of help that you were giving to your citizens. So now, what makes Nigerians better than these countries that are crying that we were um, subsidizing, uh, uh, as the case was? So. My quarrel is Nigerians, if Nigerians will be the same way as countries that do not produce fuel mm. at all, then no good has come to us. Yeah, definitely. You're talking about the palliatives, which the government has said. Yeah. And even the private sector is beginning to also offer help mm. to the government. Uh, Innocent uh, Motos is offering alternative means of transportation you know, means of fueling vehicle. Uh, they're trying to stay away from fuel. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm putting that rightly. But they're offering vehicles that will not run on fuel mm -hmm. to the government. And I understand that um, a group of private organizations have actually offered some help to the government with regards to providing transportation to the people. Mm -hmm. So th these things are ongoing, as it were. Yes, we have agreed that these are things that the government should have considered mm -hmm. before that announcement on inaugural day, but it has done, it did is done. Which way forward? 
they say they are putting in place things that could cushion the effects of the subsidy removal. It's a good thing it's gone. The methodology has been what has been questioned and um, which way forward. Palliatives have been put in place. So let's see how all that is coming out. Labor has uh, suspended the strike. Our neighboring countries are striking on our behalf, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Uh, but you see, uh, good thing, or maybe bad, depending on where you stand, is some governors are saying, okay, because of this, uh, let us reduce the number of days for workers. We remember that in Kwara State it was done. Uh, I think uh, Godwin Obaseki also did it in his state, Edo State. Edo State. Yeah, so three days three in a week instead of week. five days. And I was asking this question that, okay, what of the private sector that cannot have the luxury of mm -hmm. telling their people to stay home? Mm -hmm. uh, what this should have been is, okay, now more people should do the work of less. So if one person or three persons were supposed to work, uh, particular, do a particular thing, maybe you have to employ like six people so that the other three, when they are not at work, uh, the other ones will be working. But if you cannot employ, then your work will suffer. In an economy already that you are suffering, there's no diesel for you, there's nothing for you to run your, your, your business and all that. So what will the government do? that will be universal enough so that whether you're private or your government, you are going to enjoy. Provide because electricity. Yeah. They should make sure that there's electricity. It's crucial. In cushioning the effect of this, they well, must one of them. make sure there's electricity. Mm -hmm. And also some of these private companies are offering help. Are talking about um, electric cars. Innocent has said that if the government wants electric car, they'll make that available. So that's one of the things, you know, in a bid to avoid dependence on fuel, now that fuel has become so, so expensive. So these are some of the measures that are being put in place. But will the government want it? Because I, I keep saying this, once upon a time, this, this National Assembly said, or at least somebody in the National Assembly raised the motion that Nigeria should never talk about electric cars being a country that produces fuel. Now, the government, everything fuel, they talk about Dangote refinery, which... Uh, you and I know that a lot of them have shares in, and now Dangote is the person who is taking the name, yes, but a lot of them have shares in it. So will they encourage people like the one you've mentioned to do what they are saying they're going to do, produce electric cars when their investment is just about to start? There's also a young man uh, we knew about in Medugri that was converting minibuses and other cars to electric cars. Uh, that was like a year ago or two years ago, and nothing has been heard about him. Patenting whatever he, he, he was doing has not been done. Just this week, we also played a video of a young man also who is converting keke and other small mm -hmm. uh, vehicles to, um, uh, electric. To, to electric. And you will find out there will be no investor, a major investor like the government or anybody that will come in to say, okay, let me encourage this guy to do what he needs to do. Well, whether the Nigerian government likes it or not, the world is moving from fossil to renewable energy, mm. which is why that Nigeria should have made good use of oil that we have. Mm. We had the oil boom era. What did we do with all that we got from that? These are some of the questions that we keep asking ourselves. So whether we like it or not, the world is moving to renewable energy. Mm. All right? And I think at this point in time, now that uh, we are in this situation, the fear crisis situation, and the fact that it's facing us, staring us in the face, that, look, things have got to change. In fact, things are changing by themselves. I imagine that that young man in the East that's converting... Uh, those keke to electric keke and mm -hmm. buses, that now that um, people will begin to take him more seriously. I, I don't know if it's the same video that we're talking about. He said they already have investors. Yeah, investors, yes. They investors. already have investors. So people are beginning to take it seriously. Something they didn't consider last year with the guy in the north he mentioned. Mm -hmm. This year, sharp investors are going to be looking in that direction. How do we now, because, I mean, the theme for today is, what is our theme again? Mm, every, crisis every crisis offers, offers an, economic opportunity. an economic opportunity. So that's what it is. Investors are going to jump in on this and then see what they can make out of it. Yeah, my, 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 my hope is that the investors that he's calling 
uh, investors that will come with big amount of money because he's still doing some manual things. Uh, we're not seeing anything that looks like there's going to be um, a big company with all the tools that he needs and employ a lot of people, but he's just saying investors. That could be that, okay, I have come to uh, give my car to you to ch turn it to electric, and you call me an investor. I just hope it's a major investor, big companies that will want to invest, big private individuals that have that money, the capacity, to turn him from that manual little person to a big company that will be competing with other uh, companies uh, around the world. Well, it's, it's, it's work in progress. It started, I mean, we're moving from a situation where uh, great inventors in the country have never been taken seriously, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from Balaka to all the others. Yeah. And now we have one who says that investors are keen in, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's something positive, it's something to share. And I, I think it would only also encourage more innovative-minded people to come on board. Yeah. It will and encourage them to come on board. Another thing I just, I just look at and I, and I wonder why it is happening is that the, the government is spending so much looking for oil in the Chad Basin, looking for oil that in the next 10 to 15 years may not be... That's relevant. Th that relevant in our economy because everybody's moving away. In Nigeria, th there is no way you find out that there's a possibility you drive your car without, without uh, fuel that you will not want to explore. Even though electricity is still uh, not a problem to charge these cars and you may need uh, generators, you may need other things that will depend on fuel, still it will be uh, something that some, a lot of people will want to consider. Yeah, which is why I said that to cushion the effect, one of the things that the government and state governments, now that everything has been opened up and states can now uh, generate their own power, um, one thing that they must consider if they are serious about the masses, if they are serious about cushioning the effects of this, is to ensure that there's electricity. Mm -hmm. They must see to it because there's no other way out. Affordable electricity. Of course, affordable mm -hmm. electricity. Because now, they, if you're having a prepaid meter, what you used to subscribe and use for, let's say, a month, you're not using it for up to a week now. Mm. It's, and it cuts across. Even, even your, your phone, you subscribe, you, you, you load your phone, uh, the way you used to use it, the data on your phone that could have lasted you for one month, now is like three days if you're lucky. So everything is connected to this to these fuel, and now there's no more fuel. And we, we're in for it. We hope that something good will come out of it. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, let's not lose our topic, our <laughs> theme of the day. Every crisis offers mm -hmm. an economic opportunity. And it is true, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Depending on how you look at a problem and a challenge, yeah. something good may just come out of it. And... Uh, you know, I, yeah, let me, just what, because of what you have said, um, let me just bring this thing I used to say, that if, uh, if you look at people who are very rich, their life is not so different from the people who are in prison, except that maybe they have some choices. Because you're going, you're going uh, if, you're, if you're moving on the street, you are in your car that is tinted, most likely. Uh, you're just like, like on your own. It's like you're, you're inside a black Maria <laughs> if you're a prisoner. You go to your house, your gate is higher than even that of a prison because you're a big man. You're there. Uh, so it depends on how you're looking at it. Some people are behind bars, but they look at it as... Uh, solitary as a place uh, that has given them the quietness to think better. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Nyango, seriously? Yeah. Shoyinka, for instance, wrote a book while behind bars. Some people will spend all that time crying. But he wrote a book and the man died mm. behind bars. Mm. So it depends on, like you said, depends on how you see it. Mm. Some people struggle to go to jail. <laughs> because they have that's free in the food. US, they, they have free not food. here, not know. here, that's but whatever in the US. It, is, it depends on your mindset. So if your mindset is that, oh, I'm dead, sometimes the confinements that we find, the coughs that we put on our hands are not really physical. It's mental, it's it psychological. So wherever, whatever situation you find yourself, it depends on your mindset. You can make the best use of it or 
you you die. Well, history, economic history in the U.S. has it that the Great De Depression created uh, the exchange, uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. Mm, you see? So it's, it's one of the things that came out of the Great De Depression in the U.S. a uh, long time ago. So, yes. Someone said um, <laughs> Tinubu just one week has solved the traffic situation in Nigeria. And that was because he, at that time, when it just was just announced, vehicles were really not on the road because everybody was uh, trying to get the fuel, but the vehicles trying to get are the money. Back, the vehicles are back. So that thing that yeah, was Yeah, mama's whack. The vehicles are <laughs> back. Those Uber, those who ride Uber are now uh, going on strike because they want some sort of renegotiation. Mm -hmm. They buy this fuel now at a more expensive rate. Uh, those, uh, the commissions taken from them, you know, according to them, should be reduced by 50% so that they can also take home something for themselves. Yeah. And so all the sectors, the different people who are using fuel would have to shift the burden to the consumers. I mean, that's just a natural law. So um, it just, life must continue. Life must continue. Life must so continue. So if you have to make a life, uh, you know, you have to go to work and you have to open your shop and all that, it's good to have some information from uh, the Traffic Management Agency in Lagos. Just nine minutes ago, uh, it was posted that Crown Estate down to Ogidon is slow due to flash flood. It was really, really torrential, the rain of last night, and it was windy. We do hope that uh, there's not going to be m such bad news that we're going to hear, maybe a loss of life or something, because the wind around the area I stay was so strong that I know that a lot of roofs will go off. And I do hope it didn't carry anybody, it didn't wound anybody or mm -hmm. kill anybody. And we'll hear, um, we will definitely hear some bad news, but it shouldn't include or involve uh, a life. So that's what I'm hoping. Uh, so fl flash floods, because of flash floods, uh, there has been a slow movement around Crown Estate down to Ogudon. But all other locations are good from Ekpe, T-Junction to Ebeju, Eleko, Baba, Adisa, Ebutu, Awoyaya and Green Spring School. Ogidon to Olokonla uh, is fine, but a bit slow to Petrocam. Petrocam to Ibrahim Adesonya is fine to Aja Jubilee Bridge. Ado Badore to Aja and uh, Under Bridge is good as well. The return trip is fine. And most of the, the posts that we've seen here show that uh, the traffic is not that bad. Census to Adelabu uh, connecting Masha on road stadium inward and outward is good. Masha to Kilo connecting uh, Agboni, Nepa, and Olatunde or Nimole is good, likewise, a return journey. And every other place that we're seeing here uh, is good. And the information that we're giving you is less than 20 minutes. I do hope that nothing has changed for the wars. Um, because in Lagos, five minutes is enough for a lot of things to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so get up now, get to work, and do what you need to do, and put food on, the, on your table and for your family as well. All right, so moving from there, we go to our top trending. Uh, top trending, civil servants in Edo's to work three days a week. Mm. We just talked about that briefly. Uh, this Edo state governor has decided to cut down the days of work mm. for this, the servants, the civil servants there. So that, um, well, a way of cushioning the effect of this increase in the price of fuel, mm. which has led to uh, an increase in the cost of transportation. How much does it cost them to go to work now? Mm -hmm. And I, I do hope that um, the private sector, some people, some employers that may not be able to uh, do what the government can do, just saying three days out of five you go to work, um, I do hope that they can make arrangements so that some of their staff who might want to stay back, because I've seen that a lot now, uh, people go to work and they come back on Friday. Some of them just have no option than to just sleep on their stools, on their, on their desk and the next morning they're up and about. It will tell a lot on their mental health, their, their, their physical health and all that, just going to rest your head on your desk till the next morning you continue working just because you know that if you go five days to work, your salary you have to borrow and add before you can complete the one you need for transportation. 
So they should consider this as well, so that people who have or can't stay back will have a place to stay. Even if it's one big room that like a lot of people quarters. yes can go and sleep there. Those who chose to do that mm -hmm. could do that. And somewhere they can ease themselves, they can bathe and all that. Because transportation is really, really bad. If, if you're working on the island, for instance, how many people will pay you such a salary that you can afford accommodation on the island? Because coming to the island to rent a house is mm. another ball game entirely. If on the mainland we're seeing, uh, seeing um, rents going up 300% and even more, and then on the island, how much will it be? So you're trying and struggling and saying, okay, let me just sacrifice and be waking up very early in the morning to come to work since I can still afford accommodation there and transportation is not too bad coming here. And then now transportation is so terrible that if you had the option, you would want to live on the island. But that option is not there. So employers of labor should look at that rather than just saying three days off and you work two days or two days off, you work three days, maybe that's another option that they can also explore. Yeah, that's, that's an option um, for those who have the wherewithal because you must also take into account the different levels of companies. Yeah. There are companies that are large enough to uh, create alternative means of transportation. Yes. Um, probably create some sort of quarters, staff quarters. Uh, but there are companies that are not strong enough to do that. So uh, be, different companies will have to find different ways to mitigate they this. They just have to find something. solve the problem for their workers. Because life really has to go on. And also, this government, early days, yes, they made the uh, mistake of announcing it the way they've done without uh, due consultations and adequate preparations. Mm -hmm. But let's still give them time. This is a uh, one week plus, if I'm not mistaken. And so uh, l let's see how these dialogues will evolve and, and what they will arrive at. I am happy that uh, Labour and the TUC have um, taken it upon themselves to push this conversation to a, con a logical conclusion where Nigerians should be able to say, OK, yes, we are now happy. Yes, that even though a subsidy has been removed, we are happy that we can see what the, 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 the subsidy is being diverted into and it's benefiting us. We are happy that we're not suffering as a result of the removal of the subsidy because at the end of the day, it's for our good. It's for our common good. Yeah, so, but it's also annoying that um, uh, what Labour is saying, no matter how how true it is, uh, I see that as blackmail, where they just say, Labour is partisan. After all, they have Labour Party, and because of that, that's why they're talking. Mm -hmm. it, are they telling lies? Are Nigerians not suffering? Uh, are Nigerians not hoping for something better? Did Nigerians not all support this subsidy, but are only crying because of the way it was removed without, like you said, Nothing preparations. And so they're, they're, said now in saying, the past. they're now saying Labour should never talk because they are buyers. They have... They're partisan. They're all this and that. No, hasn't so, Labour protested in the past? I, I the wonder. Question. Hasn't Labour protested in the past? So it's it's really not good. When, but, but I like I like the fact that apart from all that, um, which is um, uh, some people say it's a strategy that APC always uses. You, they, they use one thing to blackmail you and make you to shut up, and they do what they want to do. But I like the fact that within this one week that the the present administration has come on board. The president has met with so many groups and tried to address the issues that they have grievances over. We didn't find that in the last administration. The president will wait until when he has the opportunity to travel. He goes to maybe London and talks to us from London and people were complaining. But the president has engaged almost everybody. Joe Hesu has called up their strike. They gave 21 days uh, uh, for the government to do the needful anyway, but they still called off their strike because the president talked with them. Labor also had the president's uh, delegation talk with them. Mm -hmm. Every other group that has been protesting has been addressed by the president. So no matter what, I still give this administration that. I still give the president especially that, that he's been proactive enough. He's 
engaging enough, and that is what we want in a president. A servant leader, a mm. leader that would listen, um, yeah. uh, not a ruler. And he said he's not going to be a ruler, but a leader. So mm. we want to see more of that. And um, I, I, I'm, I'd like to be optimistic, cautiously though, but I'd like to be optimistic that mm. at the end of the day, uh, we'll see some good light at the end of the tunnel because, as some people would say, those who are, you know, proponents for uh, the remain of, if, if that's the way to put it, those who do not want subsidy to go, mm. they believe that no matter what, that subsidy should remain for the people in all sectors of life uh, in a nation. People like Zakabala, for instance. So, but let's see how all these dialogue and discussions will go. Definitely. It's all for Nigeria, Nigerians, and our economy. Uh, almost everything is subsidized, not only in Nigeria, but in every country in the world. You subsidize the essential things Definitely. that uh, people need. Uh, but just going ahead to say because of corruption, you're removing it without placing alternatives. The people who are for the removal of subsidy are more, a lot more than the people who are saying it should stay. The, mm. the number is like... They, maybe 3% yeah. of the entire population, they say subsidy must go. But how is it going and what is replacing it? And how will the lives of Nigerians become better? Because if you're telling me that I'm saving up your money by removing subsidy and now I'm wasting or I'm spending more, I'm suffering more, then I will not see the importance of removing it in the long run. Because even the people who were crying that it should be removed because we have been told people are enjoying it, enjoying all that our money, are now saying, well... Maybe we were even wrong. So the government needs to sit up and do what You know, another to do. way that, in addition to cushioning the effects by this administration uh, to show sincerity and honesty in this, in this fight is the persecution of those who have been fingered or who, in the course of investigation, have been found guilty mm. of diverting funds, mm. subsidy funds, of stealing oil, Mm. All those who have been involved in corruption in the oil and gas sector, the persecution of those people, bringing them to justice is key to uh, giving Nigerians a closure on this. Because this is a huge, a huge uh, thing going on on the psyche of Nigerians. Oil is an integral part yeah. of Nigerians. It is, it is one thing that has affected Nigerians to the point that you can't even strongly say that Nigeria is still the giant of Africa. Because since we discovered oil, the states have become um, redundant to an extent. Back then when we had regions, that was when Af Nigeria was seen as the giant of Africa. You had the different regions playing their games well and coming up with all sorts of things. You had the cocoa, you had oil, you had mm. granite, you had rice, we had rubber. We had things going on in the regions and they were as viable as they could be. And they, 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 they left legacies for their people. They left free education. They left so many things for their people. So you had regions who were, that, they were viable. And so, but since oil came on board, what we found was this, the, the states became redundant, going to Abuja, cap in hand for money, borrowing left, right, and center. Because even as we talk about the debt by the federal government, we must not forget the debts owed by the state governors and all that they are doing in this. So we must see those who have caused these colossal damages brought to justice. It will help Nigerians find closure as we exit oil subsidy. Well, I hope that will be the case. Um, these people are almost faceless, even though they cannot be faceless. Those who are, who are supposed to know, know them. Uh, but we had a case of bad fuel being ex imported into Nigeria. Till date, I don't think uh, anybody has heard anything about the people who did that, whether they've been prosecuted or they've been brought to justice or something. I haven't heard. Even though it was heard. investigated yes. by the Ninth Assembly. Yes, we knew the pe we know the people who are responsible for buying, so people who are responsible for shipping, people are, and all these people. You cannot investigate. You already know them, but we have not heard anything. And then this funny one of Nigeria Air. Oh, uh, yesterday I heard the, the, I the managing, managing that. director, I think, oh. saying that Nigeria Air, when the, the National Assembly raised alarm that it was a fraud, that Nigerian Air 
the plane that was brought was chartered from Ethiopian Air so that the people who are investors can see how it is like. The logo will look, look like. like. I mean, it's... And then if you charter, oh, well, if I you. charter a, a Uber or Bolt Ride, will I write my name? Just because I want people to see that I've chartered it. You chartered it from Ethiopian Airlines and painted it and wrote Nigeria Air. And the next day it returned to Ethiopia and they repainted it and wrote Ethiopia Air. Billions even, have been spent on stupid? this project. Billions have been spent. And if this government is going to be seen to be serious, this is time for mm. justice to be served on those who deserve it. Mm. No more talk. Talk okay. is so cheap in this part of the world. We need to see change. So if this administration is really going to get Nigerians to, to trust it, to love it, to hail it, we must begin to see those who are found guilty, persecuted. This 10th Assembly... Across yes, parties. Yes, this 10th Assembly parties. that's going to be inaugurated soon must show itself to be different from the 9th Assembly. And they, they in uh, many ways, they, they, the Senate president has said that he doesn't care if people call his um, the assembly under him a rubber stamp assembly. He doesn't care. So if you go with that kind of mindset that I don't care what people say, I can do what I think uh, is best for me, and you just do it and leave. I just hope that the tenth assembly will think about what Nigerians will remember them for, and it has to be positive. Yeah, there are, there, there are still people in this world, in this part of the world, who believe that a good name is better than riches and gold. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if he's not one of them, that's, that's his uh, <laughs> tragedy. While well, you're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And we'll come back to take a look at the headlines on some national dailies. Do stay with us.